Hi, I'm Phnom. Hi, I'm Martis. And we're the hosts of Future Future, where two designers talk about the future of everything. We're in the business of turning science fiction into reality for a better future. And today we're going to talk about how we can make hardware design more agile. Many people we work with um, have been working in hardware for a long time, and as they say, hardware is hard. And <laughs> and that expression actually didn't exist until you know digital the digital world development mm -hmm. was was very prominent, specifically in Silicon Valley where we're based. So it's really about a perspective of whether it's hard or not. To us, hardware is not difficult; it's just a process. Exactly. So let's define what agile and waterfall means first. Agile means that, for example, if I come up with a software product, let's say an app, I make a prototype and I can send it to people to use right away. And if there are certain things that are wrong, I just give them updates mm -hmm. and, and the product becomes better and better, hopefully. Um, <laughs> and the difference with hardware is that we don't use that, really. We're more, we're more on a, a waterfall style of uh, development. So we'll design and think ahead and do a lot of uh, sort of developmental uh, design through software and different processes. And then at the very end, we release manufacturing and create a final product. And once that final product is done, you can't release a patch or release a update to make it better without really going through some costly changes. And the reason why we are talking about this is because we have a lot of experience with doing this. Not only have we put out a lot of products, mm -hmm. a lot of physical products on the market, but we have started integrating a lot of agile methodologies and our clients are listening and our clients are reaping the benefits of it. So we would like to share with you today methodologies that we're using at our studio, Nonfiction, that can help turn hardware into something a little bit more agile. A tiny bit. When you work in hardware, you hear a lot about, oh, molds are expensive, and they are. Yeah. Um, molds are, are the parts, the typically the metal parts that create each of the, uh, the, the parts of a product. For example, if you have a mouse like this, mm -hmm. each part here that you see is actually created by a mold, and a mold has multiple uh, divisions typically the top part and the bottom part for a very, very simple mold. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, you have to have a lot of molds to make a lot of parts to make one product. Mm -hmm. And if there are mistakes in uh, the fabrication of those molds, you have to remake those molds. And that costs a lot of money and mm -hmm. wasted time. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. And each mold is usually takes about three to five weeks to create, depending on the complexity. So there are different types of mold. What, what we call hard mold, made out, made out of uh, steel, right? A very expensive, very durable. You can make many, many parts out of them, 100,000 plus, a million parts out of a, out of a mold, depending on how complex it is. And uh, there are other, part, other types of molds called soft mold. Uh, so some of them are made of metal as well, like aluminum, but uh, they put out a smaller number of high quality parts, let's say 5,000, 10,000 parts. And oftentimes they're cheaper to manufacture and make because they use different uh, materials, they use uh, smaller quantities of materials. And sometimes you have like very, very soft mold, like like physically soft molds made out of silicone. And that's what they use a lot in, um, in jewelry design. You know, if you're making a ring, for example, you can make a mold out of a very specific silicone, pour in your metal, and then, and then finish up your, your ring after it's been, it's been formed. We would like to encourage um, as much as possible to use a soft mold so you can actually make fewer quantities of products and um, update your, your geometry and your products uh, more often. If done well, can save you money and can reduce the, the amount of risk that, um, that the, the product has, but um, it's, it really has to be done by people who know what they're doing, unfortunately. Absolutely. And this falls under the category of what we call rapid manufacturing. So we're making smaller tools for the manufacturing of these products quicker and more cost effective. So we can really turn out products. If we need to make changes, we go ahead and do it rapidly. In terms of rapid prototyping, one of the most 
successful methods right now is 3D printing. 3D printing, there are many different types. There's uh, additive manufacturing, mm -hmm. right? Where basically it's like layer by layer, the materials being formed and your shapes start taking form. Sometimes it's, you know, you're in a bath of a certain material mm -hmm. as being, um, Basically, it's a photopolymer. Exactly, yeah. photopolymer, and then the material like comes out um, the shape you want. Mm -hmm. And you can 3D print soft materials, you can 3D print hard materials, you can 3D print multiple materials at once, different colors, different levels of transparency. It's pretty, it's pretty high tech right now. What if you used like computational design or generative design? So you want to define those? Well, I think computational and generative. Generative is really interesting because what it is, it's taking, you put in certain constraints and parameters and it allows um, the software to design um, the, the sort of structure in between two different parts based on forces and mechanics and maybe one of your constraints that you want to establish is, I just don't want to use a lot of material because it takes a lot of uh, money to make something. So you will use uh, the power of AI and the power of computational design to help design a better, more efficient product that would take, you know, a human, you know, thousands of tries to get it right, which for a human speed would take forever, but for a computer could take hours. And also these computational design and generative design shapes are very interesting. Uh, because they're optimized based on the function of a product, whether it's lightweight, whether it's strong, or whatever, um, it tends to look very organic, mm -hmm. right? A lot of them look like bones. If you imagine what a human's bone looks like, it's a, it's a rod with two kind of balls where the joints connect. But then you look at a bird's bone, if you've ever seen those, they're kind of like hollow, right? They, they have a very porous network uh, that really allows the bones of a bird to be very lightweight, but yet very structurally sound. In order to turn hardware into something more agile, um, let's talk about local manufacturing. You know, we've been used to working with uh, overseas manufacturing in China, anywhere else in Asia and all over the world. Mm -hmm. And that requires a lot of communication, a lot of travel, a lot of trusting that things are going to be done on time, um, a, a long time shipping the products over. So, so we can make things a little bit more agile by um, including local manufacturers who have certain skills, connecting them with the right partners in order to create the product that you want to put out there. There's a, other, a couple other really cool hidden benefits. One, less taxes, customs, tariffs, things like that. We know that's changed a lot lately. And we feel a little bit better about um, you know, our environment because we're no longer shipping things across oceans, which takes tons of gas and leaves emissions and carbon dioxides in the air. We're doing it locally. We're sourcing potentially more local material, materials, and we're really employing our uh, local community to create these. And then lastly, the point we want to cover is virtual testing. So you could 3D print things, you know, uh, products one after another, test them on humans, and that's great. But before you do all that, you can save a lot of time and money by making the experience virtual. You can put on virtual uh, reality um, headsets or AR headsets and actually experience how it feels like to be around this product you just designed mm -hmm. and then make um, smart decisions from there. And and, and that can be very, very um, you know, interesting. And you can actually come up with some very, very cool innovations. We've done this a number of times. And we, what happens is we'll put several stakeholders in the same virtual room, you know, a designer, an engineer, a you know, CEO of a company, uh, someone that has to buy off on the design in a virtual environment. And they're to scale. So they're actually holding the product as it is. It's not looking through a screen and looking at what it might look like in reality. They're actually there. And there's a lot of really interesting artifacts uh, in the virtual environment. Like you can have haptics. And if, if you don't know what haptics are, they're really where, where there's feedback through the controllers. So when you pick up an object, it really feels like it has weight. It feels like you're interacting with it. And it's a really, truly beautiful experience um, that we're just really starting to take advantage of. And we've been doing it for a little while now here at Nonfiction. So here we're gonna talk about actionable items, whether you're a designer or you're a company trying to put out some really cool products, or you're just someone who's curious about how hardware works, or if you work in the digital world and you don't know whatever we're talking about every time we're talking about hardware, um, uh, we would like for you to, to start overlapping these two worlds. The digital world is one thing, the hardware world is one thing. The only way to make the hardware world more agile is to use digital tools 
and uh, hardware um, you know, experience that we've had in the past decades and merge them together, make them um, more efficient, make them uh, communicational tools uh, between you know, different stakeholders and, and really pushing great ideas forward. Let's stop making the same old products that look the same year after year. Let's actually use these tools we just talked about to take industrial design, hardware design to the next um, uh, revolution. So here we just touch the surface of what it means to make hardware more agile. We want to hear from you. We want to hear about all the ideas, all the technologies you would like to integrate into the methodology of turning ideas into hardware, into products that people love. And we want you to do that in the comments. Uh, we can you know, start new episodes about your ideas and how, how we use them uh, in the future. And uh, if you are a company that is trying to make the process more agile, talk to us. We'd love to uh, start a conversation. So until next time, thank you very much and it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Bye.